welcome. You're in the right place. It's 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. This is Jim Gerson from CareStack. You're in the right place. We've got hundreds of professionals logging in here. Uh, Dr. Phelps, we're probably going to wait about another 30 seconds or so to get started, if that's okay. Okay. And you're in the right place. Um, the good news is your cameras are intentionally on mute, and so are your microphones. However, we don't want this program to be one directional. I'm going to manage the Q&A and the chat feeds. I ask you to use the Q&A feed, please. At any point in time, ask questions. I will curate them. We're going to have a Q&A at the, at the end of Dr. Phelps' presentation. But we definitely want it to be an interactive. So again, we've got tons of people joining. What a great turnout tonight. 6 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. I'm in the mountain time zone, 3 p.m. In the, in the west. Let's get started. And um, with no further ado, this is Jim Gerson from CareStack, along with Jeff Daly from Darby Dental. We're your co-sponsors for this afternoon and this evening's program. And a quick um, item on housekeeping. You're going to be presented with a CE code at the one hour mark of this program. You're going to go back to your CE Zoom account. You're going to log in with that code. If your state requires it, you're going to be presented with a quiz. So if you're here for a free CE and you just want the code, that's not going to happen. You got to be here to the end. <laughs> All right. Everyone's tried the game, the system. I know how it works. So we want you here. We want you engaged. And again, I will present you with the, the code at the end of the hour. At the end of the hour, you're free to leave. However, if you want to learn more about CareStack and Darby, hang on. We're going to do a demo of CareStack in the remaining at the end of that program. It's purely optional. So without further ado, I'm going to turn over to Jeff Daly from Darby to give a quick introduction. Jeff, take it awesome. away, please. Thanks so much, Jim, and thanks everybody for taking time late in their day today. Uh, we're excited uh, once again to help sponsor the presentation in partnership with CareStack as Dr. Phelps goes through his presentation on how to acquire and keep more of those patients in the practice. Um, so the, the five second shameless plug about Darby is what you may already know about us is that we partner with our customers to help keep their dental supply costs down. Over the past 10 years or so, we've also been really focused on building a suite of solutions to help resolve the challenges that our customers tell us they face on a daily basis. So today, those, those include things like IT services, mechanical, mechanical equipment repair, a uh, full implant and surgical offering, among others. Um, and you know, finally, and, and maybe most important, given what's going on in the world today, just a reminder that for our entire 70 plus year history, all of our account managers have worked completely remotely with our customers. And we hear from our customers that they really enjoy interacting with our team on a schedule that works for them in their practice. Um, so if you're interested in learning more about how we might be able to help your practice in any of these areas, please feel free to reach out to any one of our well-trained experts and, and we'd be happy to discuss it. So with that, I'll, I'll kick it back over to you, Jim. Thank you, Jeff. And that last bullet point there, education, this is a prime example of what Darby gives back, right? To the community. So uh, don't adjust your, your screens, by the way. We're having a little bit of a resolution issue from Dr. Phelps' side because I think Tropical Storm Elsa went through your area today, right? And Dr. Phelps, your line, yeah. you're on mute. Can you hear us okay? Yeah, I can hear you guys. Yeah, Great. it did went through today. I'm just glad we have an internet signal. <laughs> so do me a favor. If it becomes problematic to our audience here, please mention so in the chat feature. And I have the ability, I can always present from my screen like the old days. And Chris, you can tell me and I'll advance the slides if that works better. Yeah, perfect. So quick word on, so, that was good. Go ahead. sorry. So quick word on CareStack, our name, we may, we may not have a brand name recognition out there, but hopefully by now you, many of you or most of you have seen us as we've done dozens of CE programs and webinars over the last year and a half. CareStack is a hundred percent cloud-based solution for the complete management of the dental practice. And we typically work with two types of offices. The first is growing, ambitious, having success. They want that competitive edge and they see technologies enabling that and they just don't know how to get there. They need some help. The second, unfortunately, they're frustrated and aggravated from managing multiple software subscriptions to run their business. And when they're bringing on new employees, there's just five, six, seven passwords to remember and six different systems to train somebody on. And it just goes on and on. The frustration creates sleepless nights and aggravation for the practices. So if you fall into one of these two buckets, hang on after we're done today and hear us out for 15 minutes. We'll make it worth your while. That's our little note about CareStack. You can see some of our statistics in the bottom of the screen. So now I'm gonna turn it back. The commercial's over. No more plugs for you. We want you to feel like you're hostage. 
Dr. Phelps, I'm going to turn it back to you for your introduction on yourself and really what you're going to cover today, please. Yeah. Hi, guys. Uh, Dr. Chris Phelps here, uh, practicing general dentist in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, entrepreneur who happens to be a pretty good dentist <laughs> is how most people describe me. Uh, I've been in practice for 18 years now. Uh, I've been a multi-practice owner one time. I had four uh, offices, all fee-for-service. And kind of what we're talking about tonight is what I've been teaching a group of dentists that I coach nationwide. And it's how to survive and thrive in a, in a post-COVID world. And now that the masks are coming off, we need to be more receptive than ever than our, of our patients that are out there. Not only our existing patients and what their mindset is up to, but how to attract more new patients to keep our practices growing. So I'm excited to talk to you about this topic. It's what I have my coaching clients focused on as soon as our doors open back up after the COVID shutdown. And it's why the majority of them actually finished 2020 ahead of the previous year. Okay. So they actually finished the year collecting more and producing more than they did the year before, despite that shutdown as a result. And it really comes from this area that I call the dental marketing cycle. Okay. The cycle of the patient lifetime in our practice and how that works. And what we're going to talk about tonight is the first part of that is the attraction stage. Okay. And we're going to discuss my seven pillars of marketing, things I've used in my own practices to attract a higher quality new patient. Okay. In my case, a fee for service patient. Not only that, once we attract patients, that's great, but we got to talk about, well, how do we make sure they attend the practice? They actually show up. So we're going to talk about how to answer more new patient phone calls, how to schedule more appointments, and how to reduce costly no-shows. Because we could spend all the money in marketing that we want to get more new patients, but if they, we can't answer the phone, we can't make an appointment, and they don't show, it's still a wasted expense. So we got to have to understand why this is happening, what we could do to correct it. Once we have them in the chair, okay, Guess what? Now we got to talk about how do we influence them to say yes. And so my message here is going to be we got to get out of the habit of telling patients what they need when it comes to their dental care and get into the practice of influencing them to want dental care. Okay. And if they want it, they'll find a way to get it done. And there's a big difference in wanting versus telling. But if we can get them and follow this, we can influence case acceptance. So more people come back for some kind of treatment that you recommend, and therefore it's not a wasted marketing expense. You can put all the patients in the chair that you want, but if they don't return, you just wasted your money as a result. Okay. Next, we're going to talk about attrition. Well, now we've got them in. We, we've attracted them. They showed up. They said yes to treatment. How do we keep them? Right? How do we make sure we close the back door and stop losing them? Okay. Leaking out of the boat, if you will, because it actually costs you four times the amount of marketing money to replace an existing patient. Okay. Someone who's just basically going to replace the production that you just had, but it's going to cost you four times more to replace them. So how do we avoid that and reduce patient attrition? And ultimately, what are the two big mindsets that this, this pandemic, this time of uncertainty, this time of apprehension, if you will, have created in our patients? And what do we do about it, both for our existing patients, but also for attracting more new patients out there as well? Because because of these two mindsets, they're on such opposite ends of the spectrum, this gap has been created. And this gap is causing a gap in patient care, not only in the treatment in your hygiene chair, but the treatment in the doctor's chair more than anywhere else. So I'm going to give you some strategies on how to close that gap. Okay. I got to move the pole. So it keeps, stop showing up. So let's get to it. Lots to cover. So hey, Dr. Phelps, can I interrupt for one second? I just want to let you know who your audience is. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So thank you so much for everyone. It's, the polling is anonymous by the way, and I appreciate everyone. We had really good turnout so far. Um, about two thirds of the audience are hygienists and assistants. Okay. And then the next category is owners and or principal dentists. Nice. Nice. Well, the good, Thank you so much. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, no, perfect. That's good to know who we're talking to. But the good news is whatever your position is, all of you guys can affect these areas in some way, shape or form in the practice and, and help it grow and thrive in this post COVID world. And the first level comes with attracting more people, right? Because the new patients are the callus for growth in any business, not just the dental field. So to attract a higher quality new patient, not only the quantity that we need, but the right quality, somebody who pays our full fee, who's going to be returning for future care. That's what I mean by quality. We have to really dig into what I call the seven pillars of attraction. Okay. And the first pillar is a, is a key one. It's not starting with your medium, like trying to figure out where am I going to advertise? Am I going to do direct mail? Am I going to do radio? Am I going to do online? No, no. We got to back it up even further first. We got to figure out who is our market. Who do we want more of in our practice? Do you want more patients for hygiene? Do you want more patients for the doctor's chair? 
Do you need more general dentistry patients? Do you need more specialty or niche type patients like dental implants, sedation, orthodontic care? Okay. Who is your target market? Who do you want more of? You got to get real clear on that if you want to attract more of them. Okay. Once we know who they are, now we can delve into what our message is going to be. Okay. What are the strategic things, the headlines of our story, if you will, that is going to grab their focus and attention? Because when people are reading ads, they're looking at stuff online, they're listening on the radio, whatever the medium is, watching TV, they're skimming it for information. And they're skimming it for the key points to see if it's going to interest them to read on and learn more. So if our message isn't strong enough to grab their focus and attention to make you stand out from others around you, okay, they're going to keep on moving and they're not going to see what you had to say. So we have to worry about our messages. Now, for me, my target market, I realize, is active, independent living retirees, okay? People who are not going to see the dentist for any reason because they lost their dental insurance. But if they had the sense that they had insurance, and we're going to talk about dental membership plans a little later on, well, I thought that could be the secret to get those patients in the door. Now, once I knew that was my target market, then I thought, well, what kind of messages could I use to attract them? Well, a message you could use, let's say you have open chair time right now, right? You have capacity that you want to fill. Well, a great headline that's been working for a lot of my coaching clients is this one. Call today, get in today. How about that for a headline, right? Talking about grabbing somebody's focus. Wait, what? I can get in? Because every other dental office I've been calling says I can't get in for weeks or months, but I can get in there today? Huh, who am I going to choose? Okay. What about for my patients, that active, independent, living retiree? Like I said, one of their big barriers for coming in was they lost their insurance when they retired, and now they feel like because they don't have it, they can't go. Well, because I offer a dental membership plan, guess what? I got a solution. So if their problem is insurance, I let them know, hey, if you don't have insurance, we got you covered. We got your back. We have something for you, okay? So ultimately, you have to dial into what your unique message is, okay? Then we can strategically try to figure out what medium we want to use to promote that message, to try to attract our target market. Is it external marketing, right? We're going to blast this out to a lot of people and hope that a few trickle in, okay? Is it going to be internal marketing, right? Communicating that with our existing patients and encouraging them to spread the word on our behalf. Or is it going to be grassroots marketing? And that's one of my favorite mediums, meaning going to where my target market is. Where I, and I do on-site consumer or patient education seminars in retirement communities where they live. Now, the good news is uh, it, it, because of COVID has opened back up and people are getting vaccinated. Uh, I'm actually able to get back into the re retirement communities again, and they're welcoming people back in. They are hungry for social events, and that makes it a prime aid area and medium to spread my message to a small group of people who will then go out and spread it to the masses in their communities. So then you can kind of strategically pick your medium. Once you know your medium, now we can fill in the missing pieces. What's the content? What are you going to say in this thing? Is it going to be a lot of detail? Okay. Is more story-driven content? Or is it going to be simplified, bullet points? Okay. And depending on who your target market is, one is attracted to one versus the other. Maybe you need certain colors that represent certain things. Maybe you want certain pictures that instill emotions in people. Like when I want to promote dental implants, I love the picture of a glass of a denture sitting in a glass of water. Okay. That picture instills what people have lost the ability to do. They've lost the ability to keep their teeth in their mouth. Okay. So when somebody sees that picture and they feel that loss, that's going to resonate with them. And they're going to want to know and learn more. And they're going to see that I may have an option with dental implants to help them out. Right. So that's what I mean by content. What are we going to do to instill emotions? What colors are we going to use? Uh, more detailed or simplified bullet points. But ultimately, we got to decide we need some kind of incentive, a call to action. Studies show that call uh, advertisements with calls to action are get a better response than advertisements without calls to action. But we don't want to do the old standard special offer like $99 this, $57 that, $27 this. Unfortunately, the, the traditional offer I've seen dentists make is a race to, the, to last, right? It's a race to the bottom. It keeps getting worse and worse and worse for offices. Where I've, in some markets, I've even seen dentists giving away a cleaning exam and x-rays. $247 are just given away, hoping people will come in to see them. Instead, we don't have to do those kind of offers to attract a better quality patient. Okay, we can provide offers for things people are after, things they desire, things built around convenience, right? So scratch two things off their list is what I like to say. I want them to look at a dental advertisement and compare it to mine and say, well, I can go to that office over there and get my teeth cleaned, or I can go over here and get my teeth cleaned and get my car washed while I wait. Huh, which am I going to choose? Somebody who values the convenience of scratching two things off their list 
getting their teeth cleaned and getting a car wash done while they're at my practice is somebody I value, somebody who values time over money and is going to be more apt to doing same day treatment or comprehensive care in my practices, right? This is why this time of year, usually in the uh, spring, uh, early summer, and in the fall, I do a clean teeth, clean car promotion. So there's all kinds of offers you guys can be doing to attract a better quality patient. One of my favorite ones right now is a free second opinion. Okay. Now I don't like giving away a free exam or x-ray. Don't get me wrong, but I love giving away a free second opinion. Why? Because they've already talked to somebody. They've already had the x-ray. They'll bring it with them. But guess what? Guess who tends to get the business? The person who gives the second opinion. Why? Because it's another expert telling them that they need something, confirming it. And if they like you and trust you and the convenience that they're already sitting in your chair, guess what? They tend to choose the person with the second opinion. So why not attract more of those with your offer? I know I want to, okay? We need to add more influence to it. And there's all kinds of principles we could add to our marketing to make them more effective, okay? One of my favorite ones and the one that's most influential right now is social proof. People are looking to the evidence of what others around them are doing to justify that they should be doing it too, okay? If they don't see others doing it or act participating, they kind of think to themselves, am I the first? And I can tell you right now, people, nobody likes to be the first in anything. Nobody likes to step out from the crowd because we've learned that bad things tend to happen when you do that, right? So we need to show them evidence that this is not our first rodeo. So if you want to promote certain cases that you're doing, you got to put evidence of the cases before and after photos and put a ton of them on there so they can see you've done a lot of this stuff. They need to see testimonials. Not only I like to put a group of four testimonials on my advertisements, but I like to tell them how many more I have. Hey, if you think these four are great to read over 700 more five-star reviews, check out from Google, Facebook, Yelp, health grades, wherever, check out our website. Cause I just, as we bring them in, I copy and paste them all to my website. So they're all there for people, but I want somebody to read that in an advertisement to go, wow, they got 700 people said something nice about them and positive. That's where I need to go. Cause this other office I'm looking at, nobody said anything nice about them right? Or anything positive. People want to go where others are already going. So we can add more influence to our advertisements as well. But the big one, folks, and probably the number one thing most of you are not doing is you got to track it well. <laughs> you got to track it. You don't know what you don't know if you're not tracking. And there's different tracking services like a company I started, Call Tracker, that can help you do that. So when I dialed into these marketing things, okay, these seven pillars, right? I developed them because I had a serious need when I sold two of my best offices and I took over two of my worst offices. I was spending $36,000 a month in dental marketing, okay? And I was only getting 60 new patients for my efforts, right, between the two offices. That's total. 30 at one office and 30 at the other for $36,000 a month. And when I started tracking it, I realized I had a big problem because I wasn't answering, my team wasn't able to answer 224 new patient calls a month. And if they did answer, they only made an appointment 24% of the time. And even if they made an appointment, 24% of the time, the patient didn't show. That's one of the highest no-show rates in the industry. So you talk about a gut punch, right? That's a hard look in the mirror when you start seeing that kind of data. But I knew because I had the data where the problem was. It wasn't the advertisements not generating the leads. It's what I call this lost opportunity, this other side of the coin. We couldn't answer. We couldn't make an appointment, and they weren't showing. So I knew I had to do something about that. And I did. And we're going to talk about some of the things I did tonight. But the outcome was tremendous. I went from getting 60 new patients a month to averaging over 300 fee-for-service new patients a month, 170 at one office per month and 130 at the other. I was able to decrease my marketing expense by 74%. So I'm actually spending less to get more people. My team, I worked with them. I trained them. I listened to their phone calls. I heard the barriers that they were putting up to keeping patients from scheduling. And I heard the barriers patients were putting up from scheduling. And I gave them training on what to do about that. And we got their conversions to over 80%. And I was able to influence people to show by dropping our no-share rates down to less than 1%. And what was the result in my practices? Well, each of those two practices grew a million dollars a year over two years in a row each. Okay. So when I say these things are important and powerful, I mean it. Now, attracting them is one thing. Now, what do we do when the, the lead comes in, right? We've done all those seven pillars. We've got a, a good number of quantity people calling. It's the right quality one that we want, who will pay our full fee, who will be here at their next recall visit in six months instead of off looking, looking for the next special. Well, we got to focus on attendance. How can we dial into this answering more calls, scheduling more appointments, and reducing no-shows? Because what you see right now is not the whole truth, okay, of what your new patient potential could be. 
And I can tell you right now, all of you are experiencing a lot of lost opportunity, especially in this post COVID world. Okay. The average office right now, let's say pre COVID wasn't answering a third of their new patient phone calls from marketing sources. So these are sources you paid for the phone to ring for new patients to call and we can't answer the phone. Busy signal, it goes to voicemail or just rings and rings and the caller hangs up, okay? In a post COVID world, my call tracker data from my clients is showing us that that's creeped up. Now you guys are missing 40 to 50% of your new patient calls, okay? Talking about making it hard to grow, if we can't get new patients in the door, we don't have a chance, but they're calling and we're not answering the telephone. If we are, we're having a hard time. We're still struggling to get them to make an appointment. Conversions are still nationwide hovering around 34% for a fee for service patient. If you're out of their network, okay. Even if you're in their network, right? You accept their insurance. It's still, our teams are converting 47 to 49% of the time. That's not good. I mean, you took away the biggest barrier. You're in their network and we still can't make an appointment half of the time. Okay. And ultimately we got to decrease no shows we do all this work and if they don't show it just kills your schedule it kills your morale it kills everything any momentum you're trying to build in your practice and with the average office out there hovering at 17 percent it's not a good thing to experience okay so let's get into this first one new patient phone calls why can't we answer what's going on well the first thing to realize is it's not the team's fault <laughs> and when i talk to my dental colleagues that's usually the 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 team gets thrown under the bus unfortunately and but the fact is it's not their fault and most of you guys are team members and i'm here to tell you it's not your fault and you know exactly what i'm talking about have any dentist that, that thinks it is sit up there at the front desk and just for even half a day just observe what you guys have to go through at the front desk i mean it is crazy and chaotic okay i mean think about all the tasks and duties you got to do at any given moment you got to check in patients you got to check out patients you got to confirm future appointments you're on hold for 20 minutes waiting uh, to verify insurance benefits uh, you're, you got an existing patient there. You're taking their payment for the day. Okay. Trying to make their next appointment, right? You're calling to reactivate patients who are overdue, especially because our overdue list has gone up because of COVID because we didn't get a lot of people in during that shutdown. Okay. And many of you have experienced, you have less team members to even help you. Okay. We have less people back to work. So now we have less people to solve this problem. Okay. Compound that with, we have an existing patient problem. Okay, at any given time for every new patient that's trying to get through the phone lines, okay, you got three existing patients calling at the same time. And when an existing patient calls and they don't get you, guess what they do? They keep calling over and over and over again. Okay, they keep trying. Maybe I'll get them this time. Maybe I'll get them this time. But that new patient, if they don't get through and you don't answer, guess what? They're gone. They're Google the next office and they're moved on. Okay, so we really have to figure out what we can do to solve this problem. Well, the first thing is to realize that for most of you, there's a pattern, okay? But if you don't have your data on when you're missing your calls, again, you don't know what you don't know. For my call tracker ROI company data, what I'm finding with my clients from the US, Canada, the UK, and Australia, because it's a universal problem, by the way, is that there does tend to be a pattern, okay? We tend to be missing calls first thing in the morning, during lunch, and at the end of the day. What do I mean by that? Well, morning means about 30 minutes before you open your office to 30 minutes after you open. Lunchtime is whenever your scheduled lunchtime is, when it's usually a ghost town in your office and nobody's there. And of course, the end of the day is 30 minutes before you close and 30 minutes after you close. That tends to be the window for most of you. Well, if that's your problem, people are calling first thing in the morning when you're busy, when you first open and you can't answer, or they're calling at times when you're not there, let's say like at lunch or maybe at 5.15 because the office is closed, what could you do? We'll change that, right? So instead of my team members, they'll say first thing in the morning, doing a thousand tasks to get ready for the day, they know for that first hour, their job is to do nothing but be ready to answer the phone and handle those new patient phone calls. Everything else gets pushed to low demand times. That is not the time to be doing that if we're missing them, right? So no other activities are planned during that time. If you say that people are calling during lunch and you have no team member there during lunch, I staggered my team's lunches. That was the first thing I did, right? So somebody goes from 12 to one and somebody goes from one to two. Either way, at least now we got some coverage and the phone will be answered. If they're calling after hours or maybe on a day I'm not open, let's say at the time we were closed on Fridays and I was missing 20 potential new patient calls on Fridays, guess what I did? I paid somebody to be there to answer the phone on Fridays, okay? Let the data justify the expense. You got one person answer the phone. If the data says you're missing these opportunities, maybe you need two. 
when I saw I was not answering 224 new patient calls, I had two team members at the front desk at each of my two offices. You know what the first thing I did was? I hired the third at each office, okay? Because I knew automatically if that's their main job is to answer the telephone, I'm going to recruit some of that opportunity. And I showed you the results on how it grew my practices a million dollars a year each over the next two years, okay? You can leverage technology to help you because truthfully, you will – always miss calls, right? There's always going to be something potentially where a new patient calls and you can't answer, right? So we can't stop it per se. These are just tips on how to minimize the problem. Let's limit it as much as we can. That's why I developed this for call tracker, a missed call text alert feature. The way this works is that if existing patient calls your practice from one of my tracking numbers and your team doesn't answer for any reason, okay? Not only does the team and you as the doctor get a text alert that gives you all the caller ID data. Hey, Mrs. Jones called from your magazine advertisement. Here's her phone number. Call her back. But at the same time, the patient or potential new patient gets a text alert customized from your office that says, hey, thanks for calling Dr. Phelps' office. Sorry, Mr. Call helping other clients. We'll call you right back. We'll call you back shortly, whatever that is. Okay. So what I found is, is that when patients get a text alert from us, they will wait 20 minutes up to an hour for you to call them back. In the past, if they don't hear from you, you had about seven minutes to call them back or they were gone. Now they'll wait 20 minutes up to an hour. So it's okay if the, if the team member couldn't answer the phone because they were helping an existing patient and checking them out. They'll get the text alert and know, well, as soon as I'm done with this existing patient, I can call that person back and they're waiting for me. Okay, We can leverage technology. It's one of the things I love about CareStack. They're always adding more technology and improving. That's why they have a two-way texting feature. So we can have our patients texting with us to make their appointments. So they're not calling us on the phone. They've got chat features, okay? If you guys don't have some kind of website chat feature, you're missing out opportunities, especially on the millennial generation who 76% report that they would prefer to chat with your office than pick up the phone and talk to someone, okay? So we gotta have chat solutions as well, okay? I know a lot of our, my team at Golden Goose Scheduling, which is a uh, new patient scheduling service, we actually handle the chats for a lot of our offices. We're finding that patients will chat with us over a 12 to 15 minute period. Okay. That means you could literally, if you were at your front desk, you could be chatting with a potential new patient while you're checking out an existing patient and just go back and forth. And you actually have time to communicate with them. It doesn't have to be in that moment. The, the chat can last a lot longer, which gives you more time to close. Okay. And you got to be able to provide online scheduling options. And that's another great feature that CareStack offers. Okay. Ultimately, it's like this. When you have an online portal for patients to schedule, okay, I want you to train your existing patients to use this. That's how all of your existing patients should be making their appointments, okay, not tying up your phone lines. So if we can get our existing patients texting with us, chatting with us, using the online portal to schedule, then guess what? Then they're not tying up our phone lines to get through. And if they're not tying up the phone lines, that means the new patient trying to get through actually has a chance. But ultimately, remember this, you got to let patients communicate with you in the way they want to communicate with you, not the way you're forcing them to communicate with you, okay? Not the way you're forcing them, by making them call. Another way you can help offset this is consider a scheduling service. That's what Golden Goose does. At a minimum, you guys should have some kind of call center or call service or a scheduling service like ours to be back up to your team. So if the phone rings one or two times in your office and they, nobody can grab it, it's got to go somewhere so somebody can recoup that lost opportunity for you. I tell you, all of those services are an investment, okay? They will bring you back more money than what you will pay them. Now, let's talk about conversions, okay? Those are all ways we can decrease our missed calls. Now we got to answer and schedule more phone calls, okay? And as I said, the nationwide averages aren't pretty, right? Pre-COVID, it was about a third of those phone calls were not getting scheduled, okay? It's a little bit better post-COVID, uh, but it's still not where it needs to be. So the first thing you got to figure out, as I said, again, it's not the team's fault. Most of them have had zero training on the barriers, right? What are the things that patients are putting up that's keeping them from scheduling? And what are they going to do about that? What is the patient's mindset? Who are they talking to? And how do we handle it? So the first thing I did in my office was get the data. And I told my team, I don't care what the data says. Okay, I'm not going to use this to fire you. I just need to know who needs help and who doesn't. Because ultimately, I made the mistake of just throwing my team members up at the front and said, hey, you guys just get them in and assumed that it was just some easy task to do. But when I actually started listening to their phone calls, and I listened to thousands of them, I realized it wasn't as easy as I thought it was. So I had cer certain team members that were shining and other team members that were struggling. Well, when I saw my, my best team member, right, was handling the least amount of calls, guess what an easy change was to schedule more appointments? Guess who was first in line to answer now? In this example, Rachel. 
right? And that gave me time to, to spend training the other team members and getting them where they needed to go. But ultimately, you got to know if you have a problem, you got to dial it down to what it is. Because this lost opportunity, folks, is costing us hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. I mean, think about it. If you had 100 potential new patients call your office this month, you didn't answer a third of them, and you only scheduled a third of the ones you actually talked to, assuming they all showed, you only saw 22 new patients when you could have seen 78 more. And if an average new patient's worth about $1,000 in the first year in our practice alone, that's a lot of lost revenue we're missing out on, okay, every year. So I'm going to give you some tips on one of the most challenging patients to schedule right now, what I call the price shopper. And in this post-COVID world, we're hearing more and more of these price shoppers on the telephone, okay? So this is the language I use and I, after listening to, to thousands of these phone calls through Call Tracker and what I've trained my own scheduling agents, the Golden Goose, to follow. So this is a price shopper asking about non-hygiene related pricing, like how much is a crown or how much is an extraction? So your strategy is pretty simple. Most of you guys with these price shoppers, you think these are not good patients, okay? You think it's all about the price. And the truth is, it is and it isn't, okay? In that moment on the telephone, it is about the price. But if you can get them through the doors of your practice, you can influence them to be a great patient who will pay your full fee and stay with you for the long run, okay? So we can get our conversions, which are normally around 10% on these patients, to over 80% by following these steps. The first thing is, Try not to give them a, a price, <laughs> even though I know that's what they're asking for. So they're like, well, how much is your extraction? Well, this is where I will offer them a free exam and an x-ray, okay? Normally, I won't advertise that, but if I hear the price shopper asking about how much is this or that, I know their mindset is all about the price, right? It's all about the money in that moment. So the only way I can get them in is I have to eliminate that barrier for them altogether. So I make it not about the price. So our first line is this, well, every tooth is different. Without seeing you, it's hard for us to know what you need. Tell you what, let's get you in for a complimentary consultation and x-ray so it won't cost you anything to talk to the doctor, find out what your specific tooth needs are, have a plan, and we'll go from there. What works best for you today or tomorrow? And you go right into trying to schedule them, okay? Now, what I found is when you use this language, okay, offering them the free exam and the x-ray to come in and find out what their problem is and get a plan, that eliminates the barrier, and you'll get a skill, about a third of them to schedule, okay? About a third of them will schedule. The problem hey, is Bell, the before you go on for one second, this is great content. Yeah. I just want to remind everyone, we're getting some questions. Please use the Q and a in about 17 minutes or so. We're going to have a dedicated time to answer these questions and we do want to make it interactive. So please go ahead and use the Q and a in the bottom of the panel. If you do have questions you want to ask that are Phelps. Thank you. Yeah. Great question. Thanks, Jim. Okay. Now the next level is uh, those other two thirds are still going to push you on a price. I don't know. How much is it? How much is it? Okay. Well, we got to give them something, right? So what I want you to do is anchor them to your lowest starting at price in that category, okay? So an example, how much is a tooth extraction? Well, in my practice, a simple extraction is $150 on an adult tooth, but a pediatric tooth extraction is only $75. So my question for you is, how do you know the person on the telephone who's asking about a tooth extraction doesn't have a pediatric tooth that needs to come out? I've taken out a lot of pedo teeth on adults, right? And the point of it is, we all make mistakes when we make assumptions. People used to assume that the world was flat and that eventually you would just fall off the earth. But the truth of the matter is that's not the case, is it? Okay. So we got to get out of this habit of assuming we know what that person needs, or we have to assume that they know what they need. Because most of the time when we do that, we're both wrong. Okay. So never assume that you or the patient know what they really need, unless you're trying not to make the appointment. Okay. So what I want to do is this, we're going to give them our starting at price. So it kind of goes with something like this. So, how much is it? No, really? Well, they start at $75 and they go up from there, depending on the level of destruction of your tooth. Why don't you come in for that complimentary exam and x-ray and we'll find out what you need and how much it's going to cost before we do anything. What works best for you? And you immediately go in to try to schedule them. So what I found is when you anchor them to your as low as price, the starting at price, okay, that you'll get about another third of these people to schedule, right? Right off the bat. Now, the next thing is what about that last third? Well, the truth of the matter is those people were so dead set on price shopping you, you were probably the first or second office that they called, that they're committed to go calling a few other offices. But guess what they're going to hear when they call those other offices? The standard line. Well, the exam, the x-ray, and this is 357. The extraction could be surgical is 358. Then you need an implant. That's 2000. Then you need this and that. And next thing you know, the, every number you throw at them on the telephone, they're adding it up in their mind. So they're going, well, geez, it's $5,000 to go to that office. It's 3000 to go over there. 
It's 800 to go over there. But you know what? I kind of like that starting at price, that $75 over there. And I can tell you, I've never had a patient complain when they were in our office and wonder why they didn't get the $75 price. Because we didn't guarantee that to them. We just said, that's what they start at. And we'll figure out what you need. And when you educate them in your office, as I said, you can influence them to say yes to whatever your treatment is going to be. So what I found is when we anchored them, we'll actually get a big percentage of the, that last third to call us back and schedule after they've called a few more offices. Okay. Now let's talk about no-shows because we got to get them to show up. Nationwide average is 17%. Okay. My office was 24% when I started tracking it. Uh, the top 10% of offices range in the 7 to 8% in the no-show rate. But I'm going to show you and use some language how I was able to influence people uh, to show for their appointment and decrease my no-show rate to less than 1%. And it all comes from Dr. Robert Cialdini and his principles of influence and persuasion. So many of you know that I'm a certified Cialdini trainer, and I teach on this subject, and I teach other dentists how to influence people to say yes, okay? But one of his principles is the consistency principle, which is all about getting commitments out of people. And whether you realize it or not, if people don't make a commitment, they don't tend to follow through and do with what they said they were going to do. So we need to get in the habit of getting better commitments out of people. Then they tend to follow through with the actions that they said. So we need to get better active commitments out of them. They got to tell us they're going to do it. They got to write it down. Or they got to put some kind of effort into it, like a deposit, prepay, if you will. We got to make it voluntary. They got to feel like they have a choice, this or that, this week or next week. What do you want to do? Not, how about Tuesday at two? No. Wednesday at four? No. When you tell it to them, people feel like they're being dictated to. They feel like they lose control in that moment, and they tend to resist. They tend to fight back versus this or that. What do you want to do? It's up to you. Giving them that voluntary choice makes all the difference. And every choice they make, they're more and more committed to showing up at your office. And, of course, we need to make it a public commitment. Okay. So if you're going to take a picture of anything tonight, take a picture of this. Okay. This is the language my team used to decrease my no-show rate from 24% to less than 1%. That's it. It's the only thing we changed. Okay. We got more commitments out of people. Let's make an appointment this week or next week, Wednesday or Thursday, morning or afternoon, two o'clock or four o'clock. Remember, every choice they make is more and more and more of a commitment to show. Great. We got you down. Once we make the appointment, then we get any other ancillary information you need like dental insurance. All right, looks like we have your appointment all set. Instead of saying the standard line, how we end all of our phone calls with patients, please call us if you can't make your appointment. Change it to a commitment question. Will you please call us if you can't make your appointment and wait for them to say yes. Okay, great. Let's make it more of a public nature. I'll let the doctor and the other team members know. I'll let everybody up front know that you're going to call us if you can't be here. Hey, before you go, can you repeat back the day and time of your appointment just so I make sure I have it right in my system? What does it tell you if they cannot repeat back the day and time of their appointment they just made? Guess what? They're not, not going to show up, right? Exactly. Wouldn't you <laughs> rather know that now? <laughs> I know I would. Okay, I know I would. So those are some ways. That's the only language I use to decrease my no-shows, guys. 24% to less than one. You get more commitments out of people. Guess what? They show. And we use these same principles to increase case acceptance, okay? That's what Robert Cialdini's principles are. Reciprocity, liking, social proof, also called consensus, authority, consistency is that commitment principle, and scarcity, which is what people stand to lose, okay, by not moving your direction. And the problem is we got competition out there, okay? And our competition isn't our fellow, fellow colleagues, right? It's not the other dentists out there. It's not even the DSOs out there, okay? Those people are not my competition, Okay. But I'll tell you what we are all competing with, what our patients are spending their money on besides their dental care. That's our enemy, right? The, the high-end technologies, the iPhones, the Beats, the iPads, the family vacations, the flat screen LED TVs or, TVs or whatever they're called these days, okay? Uh, spending their money in retail places like Target and Starbucks. You know, if you're ever worried about the economy and if people can afford your care, just go hang out at Starbucks for the day. Right. The day Starbucks is like crickets and nobody's spending money there is the day you got to worry about our economy, whatever's going on, virus or otherwise. OK, uh, if there's people showing up, right, if there's people there, which has been in every Starbucks I've been in around the world, you don't have to worry. People are choosing because it comes down to need versus want. And what do people spend their money on if they had a preference? Right. People prefer to spend money on what they need or do they prefer to spend money on what they want? And we all know people prefer to spend their money on what they want. The only time need comes to top of mind is when it's life or death, like pain, right? Otherwise, it's all about what they want. 
So we can use these influence principles to reframe people's perspective and get out of telling them what they need and influence them to want the care. Okay. And how do we do that? Well, we have to understand why they're saying no to us, right? Number one, the big reason why people say no to you is they're not even in the right mindset to even hear what you have to say. And that's the truth, folks. Okay. Think of it this way. Whatever a patient comes into your practice, they walk through the threshold of your door. They come in with a mindset already pre-established. It's already there. Okay. The problem is that mindset is usually competing with what you want to talk about. They're thinking about their future vacation. They're thinking about a fight they had with their spouse just before they walked in the door. Whatever it is, that's what's in their mind right now. And here you come in talking about their dental needs and they're not even here to listen. So we got to get them in the right mindset for a yes. Okay. We got to build relationships with these people. Okay. We don't say yes to people we don't know and we like. And this is probably the number one reason why existing patients no show on you because there's no relationship there. Okay. We have to make sure that there's no uncertainty, there's no questions or doubt in their mind. And the biggest reason why we're doing this with patients and creating this uncertainty and doubt in their mind is because of something called the paradox of choice. First and foremost, people need a choice. They need two options to make a commitment. But the paradox of choice says the more choices they have, the more things they have in front of them to look at and focus on, the less likely they are to pick or focus on any of them because they lose the ability to tell the difference, right? There's just too many things. I don't know. And if I don't know, I don't say yes. So we have to decrease uncertainty. So how do we do that? We can't just say, well, you can do this bridge, you can do this implant, or you can do this partial. Let me get the financial team to come in and help go over that with you. And you guys figure it out. So we left three options on the table. The financial team is going to come in and give them three financial options for each of your three treatment options. And now the patient has nine things to decide from. Huh. I'm amazed people say yes to any kind of treatment. And by saying, we're going to let the financial team help you figure it out, we've also put the value in the patient's mind about it's all about the money, okay? And it doesn't have to be about the money, okay, in the majority of people out there. So in essence, we have to educate them on what they need, but funnel them down to one treatment, whatever that is, comprehensive treatment, a quadrant, single tooth, doesn't matter, but one plan. That's what we have to influence them, a plan they chose every step of the way and are more and more committed to. Because if they're committed, then they're certain. And ultimately, we got to increase urgency, okay? This I got time phenomenon is killing us right now. People are like, yeah, I like you, doc, right? I see the tooth, I see the x-ray, the intro camera photo, I get it. But you know, it doesn't hurt right now, so I'm going to get to it at some point. I don't do it right now. That's what I mean by lack of urgency, that I got time. But the problem is when they leave your practice, a thousand other things get in their way in their world, and guess what? you get pushed lower and lower and lower down the priority scale, okay? So we got to increase urgency in them and make this important in their life and what they value, okay? And the fifth reason why people say no to us is because we don't really understand how to properly anchor them, okay? We don't really understand how to properly anchor them. Now, normally I spend two whole days on this idea of persuasion and teaching you how these persuasion principles apply, not only to the problems we have in dentistry, but case acceptance. But this is probably the biggest one, okay? This lack of anchoring. And this meme is a classic example of what I'm talking about. So why is it that in the above example, a pair of shoes can be listed at $100 and nobody's buying it, but the same pair of shoes is actually more expensive at $125 and everybody and their grandmother is fighting over each other to get a set? What changed? Well, guess what? What changed was they got anchored to something first before they saw the main thing, the main number. So here's what's the truth is. Whatever number you throw at someone, whatever option you put in front of them, they're always going to compare it to something in their life. You cannot control that. And when you let them control that comparison to the things they're spending their money on in their life, we tend to lose. So somebody looked at this and said $100 for shoes. Man, that's more than my car payment. That's my utility payments. I can't afford that this month. And they've already shut your door to a yes right off the bat. Versus in the second example, they saw, wait, the price was $200. Man, I couldn't have afforded that. Oh, but look, this is only $125. Huh. How does $125 sound in comparison to $200 in contrast? Sounds a whole lot better, doesn't it? So this idea of we need to anchor them to something else first before we talk about what we want to talk about, their ideal treatment. So the example I give in this is a crown. So when, if I know they need a crown, I'm going to give them a choice. You can do nothing, but here's what's going to happen. It's going to get worse. It's going to cost you more time, money, and pain. And then if I got to fix it down the road, I'm looking at a root canal buildup in a crown for $3,600. Well, 
But the good news is we're not there yet. If I get to it today, it's only a crown and that's only $1,200, right? Does that work for you? Great. But in fact, it's not $1,200. After your insurance pays its part, it's only $800. Now, how does $800 sound in comparison to $3,600? Doesn't it sound a lot more reasonable today? And maybe I shouldn't let it wait. Okay. So when we anchor them to something else first and then take them down the price stairs, as I call it, that automatically, more than anything else, sets the stage for a yes. And for those of you that want to learn more, send me an email. I've got a great two-day presentation coming up on this whole idea of persuasion. Uh, use the code CARESTACK when you register, and thanks, Jim, for doing that as a sponsor, and we're going to give you guys $500 off that course. Okay. Now, our last two topics I'll finish quickly are this. Okay, How do we reduce patient attrition? Well, the, how do we close the back door is we got to build better relationships. And the only way to build better relationships with people is we got to free up our team's time at the front and other areas to actually have time to build that relationship, right? We're too busy and distracted by other things and cleaning up and getting ready for the next patient that we're ignoring the person in front of us and we're not taking the time to do that. So I want to free up my team's time. That's why we outsourced everything. New patient calls to my call center. We outsource insurance verifications and filing and all that stuff, confirmation calls. So my team at the front had time to connect with those people and make sure they leave with their next appointment. Okay. We got to make things convenient, offer an online scheduling, create more anchors to the practice means there's the relationship between the doctor and the patient. That's an anchor. We got to build that. There's an anchor between the team and the patient. But I also want to anchor them to solutions we offer the, to the problems they have. And that's what I meant earlier about a dental membership plan, especially for my target market, those independent living retirees. When they, I know they can go out and buy their own insurance policy for 700 bucks, I can offer them something in contrast a whole lot better for a lot better value and less. And studies show that people who have a membership plan outspend every other type of patient. They spend more than insurance patients and they spend more than cash paying patients in your practice. Okay, So if you don't have a membership plan, you're missing out. And of course, it makes for a great anchor. Why spend $700 on dental insurance when with our membership plan, it's only $365. For a dollar a day, you can get back on the path to better oral health. So using a membership plan not only helps you reactivate patients who haven't made an appointment in six months to 18 months because they lost their insurance during that time frame. They just didn't want to tell you. Okay, But plant the seed to your existing patients now who have insurance because of COVID and businesses were suffering financially. Guess what's going to happen? Most of the, of the dental insurances are going to get cut out from employers because those employers are going to be looking to save money somewhere. So they're not going to offer dental insurance anymore. And guess what? Your patients aren't going to show as a result. So let them know that if that happens tomorrow, we got you covered. While you got insurance today, you might not have it tomorrow. So if that happens, let us know. Consider outsourcing. As I said, free up the team's time. Communicate with them. Newsletters, newsletters, emails. People need to know you're thinking about them and trying to connect with them and engage with them. Okay. And outsource and delegate somebody to recall reactivation. Somebody has got to be on the hunt for these patients, emailing them, texting them, calling them on your behalf, whatever that is. Okay. To try to reactivate them, to get them back into your chairs, right. To prevent that attrition. But ultimately the easiest thing you can do is to make sure that existing patient leaves with their next appointment. And I can tell you right now how many offices I can't even count. It's too many that don't do that simple little fact that let that patient slip through without making their next Appointment. Dr. Phelps, you, your five minute warning. Like I'm the guy at the nightclub with a red light going. Yeah, perfect. Because I'm almost there. Right. So la last but not least, we've got what do we do in these times of apprehensions like in this COVID has created? OK, and these apprehensive times, these times of uncertainties aren't going to go away. It could be an economic crisis. It could be an environmental crisis. Right. Ultimately, when we're all in a sense as a group in your community, in your town, nationwide, in your country, whatever, are in a time of uncertainty, there's been two real mindsets that have been developed, okay? One is I call the risk tolerant mindset and one that's called the risk averse mindset. And because these two mindsets, it's creating a gap in patient care, both in our hygiene chairs, but more specifically to our doctor chair treatment. So the risk tolerant folks are just those. Those were the first people to come back into our office when the doors open back up. Those are the people who were in my office, ready to get treatment, dying to get in, weren't wearing a mask, didn't care about any of the precautions we had taken, not, didn't ask one PPE question, okay? They were just ready to get it done, okay? While my risk-averse patients were staying at home scared to death, okay? Fighting tooth and nail, waiting, what's going to happen? I don't know. Am I going to be safe, okay? So the way to combat this is you got to externally market heavily during these times of uncertainty to bring in more of the risk-tolerant folks to let them know you're open and available. At the same time, 
you got to internally market and communicate how you're keeping your existing patients safe. Because the sooner you communicate with them and the more you communicate with them, you're going to get your risk averse patients to come back in sooner. At the same time, you're going to extend the amount of time you see your risk tolerant folks closing that gap in treatment to where you probably won't have a gap in treatment at all. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. It's a lot of information to hit you in a small amount of time, but that's what the questions are for. So, Jim, what do we got? Dr. Phelps, thank you so much. Super comprehensive. I know it's really hard to give a presentation to a black box, right? Yeah. But you've got massive engagement here. Um, everyone who's logged in is still here. There hasn't been any fallout, and I wish you could say that about all our courses. Um, so you've set the, buy, the bar very high. And I've had a couple of requests for your content. And what I would tell people is this is Dr. Phelps's content. It's his intellectual property. Please email him, reach out to him. You can have a one-on-one -on -one discussion or request information directly from him, but his email is up there on the slide. And I do want to encourage people to ask questions. Um, the first one that came through Dr. Phelps is from one of our attendees mm -hmm. is earlier when you showed the, the graphic about you know, your staff and their ability with um, conversions on, on yes. phone calls, there was a huge variance. And this viewer mentioned, you know, what was the conversation like to keep these people whole and to kind of make it sure that, you know, they, you know, so how do you take the low performers, get them to become good performers and yes. then take the Rachels of the world and even make them better? Yeah, that's a great question. Well, the first thing I had to dig into is this data is just starting to scratch at the truth. Right. So let's say, you know, Janice at 13 percent. So I had to go back and actually look and listen to Janice's calls and identify one of two things. OK, either this was something that Janice really had an opportunity to schedule the appointment and just bungled for one reason or another, or she had no chance to schedule it, meaning the patient was calling about capacity, meaning she, the patient wanted a specific day and time and we couldn't accommodate them. Right. We didn't have it open. Like if you're, they want a Saturday appointment and you're not open Saturdays. Well, that's not Janice's fault, right? Not really. It's telling to me because that may mean I need to open up on Saturdays if the data justifies it. Uh, or maybe they're asking about procedures that we don't do. They're asking about, you know, if we do implants and your office doesn't do implants. Well, why would I count that against my team member? So I really need to look at it and see if I need to readjust the data, okay? If it's not, if it was really an opportunity that they could have scheduled, say it was an insurance question or whatever that was, a price shopper, as we mentioned earlier, well, then one of the easiest things you can do, that the first thing I did was get the data. Like one of the things we track at Call Tracker is those specific reasons for each team member why they didn't make each of those appointments. And it's a transcript. And if they can listen to it if they want, but I like reading them. And I sat down with my team once a month and I said, let's go through your data. Right or wrong, I mean, I'm not judging. Let's just talk about it, right? So Janice, let's read yours. Why didn't you schedule these appointments? Let's read it. Okay, Janice, thinking about this now, now that you've said this out loud, thinking back on, is there anything you could have said differently to change the outcome? Does anything come to mind now? And if she had some ideas, great. I'll put it to the team. Hey, does anybody else have any ideas for Janice on what she could have done to improve the outcome here? Okay, here's my ideas. All right, great. Let's try that and we'll see how you do it next month. All right, let's go to the next one. And I did that for every one of our calls they didn't schedule for every team member at the front. Okay. And guess what happened to their conversions, Jim, the very next month? They doubled. Yeah, I can imagine. That's it. Okay. And every month, just by doing that with no other additional training, right? Well, it took me time to figure out what the barriers were and to come up with the strategies to overcome them. But just the accountability of talking about their data, they were able to figure out a lot of it on their own. Okay. So that could be a huge boost to all your conversions right off the bat. Thank you. We did have a follow on question from someone else on this topic. And by the way, we have several people who've raised their hands. You have to be like a black diamond skier of Zoom for me to unmute your line and allow you to speak and it be intelligible. So do me a favor, use the Q&A feature. That's the best way to get your questions addressed versus me trying to unmute you, you unmuting yourself. It will take us three or four minutes. Um, so fast forward to today, Chris, where does, what does it look like right now ratio wise for your team? What is the conversion rate look like on your calls versus where you were, you know, historically? Yeah. So I was able to get my team to top out at around 84% conversions. Okay. Uh, and that was across the board average, right? I had some that were high nineties. I had some that were low eighties, but ultimately it was around 84%. I think truthfully uh, your goal should be 70%. I think that if you can get to 70% conversions, you're doing better than 99.9% .9 of practices out there. Okay. And that's an, an attainable goal. You can convert and schedule, assuming it's not a capacity or they're calling about services you don't do, 
right? But it was a real opportunity that you had. You should be able to schedule 70% of them. Great. I love this next question. This person's asking like, if there's one thing I could implement tomorrow in my practice and you're in our position, like rewind the clock eight, you know, two, three, four years, what would that be that I can go and just put into play tomorrow that can make an impact with my business? Yeah. The biggest thing for me is it all goes back to case acceptance and influence, right? Because if we can get more patients to say yes to treatment that you've already got in your chair right now, that's going to automatically increase your revenue across the board. And if you increase your revenue across the board, guess what? Now you have money to invest in solving the other problems in your practice, right? It makes the things a whole lot easier when you have money in the checking account. So learn how to anchor people. Think about what you want to present, let's say the crown, and back it up. Think about the ethical consequence of what's going to happen if they do nothing. And what's that going to cost that person in time, money, pain, whatever, because they waited. And start your conversation with that. The better you get at anchoring people first, then talking about their ideal treatment, the more acceptance and compliance you're going to see and the more patients are going to say yes to your treatment. The, I mean, I've had thousands of doctors and their teams that have gone through my influence training, and that is the number one thing they said that when they went back and implemented, changed their results overnight. They saw instant results in case acceptance by doing that and the revenue changes that come with it. Excellent. Thank you. This is from Stanley in our audience. Is there value in giving lectures at libraries, churches, et cetera? And what are your thoughts on that? The value is, for me would be if your target market is there, <laughs> right? If they're hanging out there, if you're into librarians uh, or, you know, the people who go to libraries, that's your target market. You know, I would survey my patients, my existing patients. That's one of the things I do to try to identify, you know, who is already my patient. Do I want more of them? And I'll ask them, what are you reading? What TV shows are you watching? Where are you getting your information? That's a great question to ask them. Hey, do you go to the library? And if I see a bunch of people say they go to the library regularly, then yeah, guess where my boat's going to be? At the library doing something. <laughs> Putting my messages out there. Well put. And I just want to reemphasize again, this is Chris's contact information. Um, he's super responsive with email, no pressure on you, but I know you have a full clinical day every day and that's why we're doing this in the evening, but um, please reach out to him and email him if you have questions. We have one last question. And then I'm going to give the code because I know if I don't give the CE code, people are going to show up on my doorstep here in Denver, and I don't want that. They're yes. already there, Jim. They're there. He's knocking on the door. He's got this whole contingent there. Um, so early in the program, Chris, you showed a, a kind of a graphic how you change your marketing spend, and you got better results. Can you yes. talk a little bit more about some of the elements to that, like how you know you change your the way you presented yourself conceptually to the market, or was it just kind of more of a, you know, fire hose versus maybe strategic focusing? Well, you know, again, when I started dialing into my specific problems, I realized it wasn't the advertisements I was spending that money on generating opportunities and leads. Okay. Uh, it was, we couldn't answer the phone and we couldn't make an appointment and people weren't showing up. So when I dialed into those three areas in particular and spent all my efforts and research and time trying to first identify why it was happening and then try to figure out what can I do about it and solve it and get my team behind that vision, okay, that changed everything, okay? And within three months, by the way, I started seeing these results. Not three years, three months. Wow. Okay? When you start answering more calls, you get more people in the door, right, and they show up for their appointment, you have nowhere to go but up. Well put. Thank you. Uh, I, so on behalf of Darby and Karasek, I want to thank you for a tremendous presentation. Go back to that last slide so everyone has your contact information, if that's all right. Yeah. Reach out to Chris directly. There's a couple of questions that we didn't have time to answer. And e email I got, me. Guys, yeah. I got to bust your chops. You're sitting in your hands. I'm asking you to put up questions. Be more vocal. <laughs> Shout from the mountaintop. So ask your questions to Chris in a one-off email. That's totally fine. I'm going to give you your credit here in a moment. I want to remind everybody, if you want to hear about the upcoming courses that Darby and CareStack are collaborating on, you have to join our champions group in Facebook. Like everyone is tired and exhausted by getting more and more emails, opt into our group. That's where we post links for registration. Our next program is in three weeks. 